Growing up in rural Alberta, you, know, you didn't go to town very often to play hockey. I was fortunate, we grew up with, I grew up with six brothers, so seven boys in our family, no sisters. And we were all, you know, we were all good athletes because we were so close in age. So whatever the season was, was the sport you played. Right, so if it was summer, it was ball. If it was fall, it was football. If it was winter, it was hockey. That's the way it worked. Dad curled, but you, we lived on a farm, so you milked cows, you did all the work, and then once you're all done your work, then you went and played. So that's that's what we did. Was it a dream to become an NHL player? I just think since we were little boys, we pretended we were. That's what we did. Like I remember from being a little boy, I was going to play at the Chicago Blackhawks, and I ended up playing for the Chicago Blackhawks. And, so things like that stick out in my mind, but but more so sticking out is, is is because how we were raised. It was the mentality of get the job done, right? On the farm, take care of it, get it all done. The harder you work, the more you do it together. That that all ties into being uh, a good team player when you think right. about hockey. So, you know, I think one thing about uh, rural kids or farm kids, uh, you know, young adults coming into the NHL, they're, they're grounded. They, they, they still don't have a place to go back to. They still know that and they still in their minds have seen their parents or their grandparents or their brothers, their uncles, whoever it is, their moms uh, working their tails off to get it done. And you know, in the summers in Alberta here, it's, you know, it's late. At, we get 20 hours of daylight and that's uh, our dad always told us, he goes, I don't care what time you boys get home, but you better get up when I do. And that was the deal. And I still, I still live by that. The biggest part about farming and ranching is equity. It's if you think you're just going to get rich in a hurry, well then that ain't going to work and that's one of the biggest issues you have when you, when we talk about the mental health part of it or younger people that are having trouble with it. Well, because there's a lot of people in their age group that are out, they're on a salary or they're making so much an hour or they're in the oil and gas industry and it's a little different story, right? We. We believe strongly in taking care of each other and taking care of our land, and that makes you feel good. I can go to sleep at night never worrying about whether I did my best, right? Even though the hockey part is taking care of a lot of things for us, we still, this has to work. This has to work. I promised my father, this has to work, and I'll make it work. You gotta have a really, really strong, strong heart and strong belief in what you're doing. The biggest thing, I can get up in the morning, I always tell myself, I'm going to feed the world today. In Fort Vermilion, the canola harvest is on the horizon. Thunderstruck Ag is in town, and Bill Bays has brought a group of his farming friends together for breakfast and to check out Thunderstruck's Copperhead Concaves. Some of the things that we've been talking about this morning is different ways that, that you can go faster and get more. And, and to give an example of what a mile per hour can mean, if you're harvesting 2,000 acres and you can go a mile per hour faster, that's 10 hours that you save in the seed. Everybody, how do we get a clean sample? We close up the concave and we speed up the rotor. That's how we do a good job. We're the opposite. I want to open the concave up and I want to really slow that rotor down and I want to let the material rub the material. This notch bar, what this is designed to do is to restrict the material, okay. right? The material is going to thresh the material. The other thing about these is the cover plates. So this is how we're doing all crops. This is a really unique feature because guys are used to seeing it where you close off a whole section, but you don't have to. It comes with three sets of cover plates and all we're doing is making adjustments based on what we're seeing from the sample. Cover plates are all about sample quality. One of the big problems is guys will try to turn up their wind to clean up their sample, to blow the straw and chaff out, and, you know, open up our sieves, turn up our wind. But with John Deere throwing everything against this side, we don't have balanced sieves. And so if your sieves aren't balanced, when you turn up the wind, it takes the path of least resistance. Every John Deere rotary combine has what's called an auger extension 
above the shoe augers. These are the shoe augers here underneath where the concaves drop. And if you look, we've pulled this one up. And the reason we pull it up, it's on a slide and there's four bolts, it's a 15 mil wrench. The reason we pull it up is so that it'll deflect as the material's coming and the rotor's throwing everything over here, it'll deflect the material over into the middle sieves. And what that'll do is it'll allow us to balance our sieves evenly across and now we can clean up the sample. This is something I recommend for every John Deere guy and most guys don't even know what's in their machines. What we do is we actually give you the capacity that these machines are designed to give you, right? You look at John Deere and Case and you look at every single one of the flagship machines from the 9250 all the way back to the 7000 series. Did the concave section change at all? More horsepower, same threshing. From John Deere 9770 to an S790, did they change one thing in there? One thing, more horsepower, no more, no more capacity. And that's, that's one of the things that we give is you can actually use the capacity of those machines. And so most guys are limited to two and a half, 2.8, you know, 2.9 miles per hour in 50 bushel canola because otherwise they start going faster than that and it starts coming out the back as loss. The really unique thing about Copperhead is the spacing between the bars. And so because of our spacing and how we get progressively open, we're threshing and unloading all the material in the first two sections, which allows us to go faster, which is important. That's where we get the mile per hour. And because we're unloading it so fast, we can slow down the rotor, we can increase the ground speed. So this system is designed to work all together to allow guys to go faster, use less fuel, and have less coming out the back. Mm -hmm.